Up to until a couple of hundred years ago, all of our settlements, cities and towns and villages were based on, you know, where can we get enough clean water? And we're coming back to a point where that resource pressure becomes very real for us day to day. We're going to be increasing population levels, but this is going to go on to increase it by two billion more people in the next 30 years. If we continue at today's pace of freshwater usage, the gap between the supply of fresh water and the demand of fresh water is projected to be as much as 40 percent. There's wars. Darfur was largely a war about water and water rights. Another example which is huge is that of the Aral Sea. The cotton industry in Central Asia was significantly supported with fresh water. Fresh water was diverted from the rivers that feed into the Aral Sea into the agricultural lands which grew cotton. Net result, the Aral Sea has pretty much dried up and the place is an ecological disaster. Let's flip back 1997. The Yellow River, one of the major rivers of China, went dry for nine months of the year. Finding mechanisms in which this opportunity or the scarcity value of water becomes reflected in the decisions people made, this for me is the fundamental challenge. Sure. I mean, I think the papers have progressed well. I guess my The Global Agenda Councils are really a brain trust of the world's smartest thinkers and experts from around the world, from different regions, different stakeholder groups. It's different than any other event because it goes beyond just meetings and, and preset panels. It really is about group conversations around issues and solutions. The World Economic Forum is a rather unique organization committed to improving the state of the world by engaging business, political, academic and other leaders of society to shape global, regional and industry agendas. Right now we have 600 people represented and they'll convene in 72 different councils and have conversations over three days essentially. So the issues range from food security to climate change, systemic financial risk, population growth. The councils, if they talk about thematic issues, they talk about natural resource scarcity and, and here you have water as one of the key elements in that. Water security is understanding how the water resources in a particular catchment, in a particular area, underpin the economic, the social and the environmental well-being of that area. Further into our first session. And this is the allocation of blue water to farmers. Who are the players? What are the major solutions? Uh, and how do we. It's been particularly valuable activity? that although many of us from the corporate sector are relatively new to the water debate, that many people on the Global Agenda Council have been living the challenges of water policy for 20 or 30 years. I'm here because I believe that the World Economic Forum offers uh, me and the water world a great opportunity to advance the cause of water. 
the issues of uh, geopolitics, the issues of political stability, the social harmony, all comes from water. I'm here because I believe passionately in finding solutions to the issues in the water sector. We have to remind people that the environment matters. And in this arena, we would suggest it underpins the economy that everybody's trying to wrestle with here. And so you've got people who can say, well, actually, you know, we tried this before and this is why it didn't work. So if you're going to try it again, perhaps do this differently. I mean, I, I think I understand it. I think it's exactly wrong. So what to we've say. done today is we've had the, the first afternoon of the council meeting. Um, we've had a good debate around two things, really. First of all is how is the progress on, on water going? Uh, in the different organisations that we work with. What do governments think about it? What do businesses think about it? What do NGOs like WWF think about it? And how can we work together more? What you have through that is an opportunity to have that conversation with those exactly. students that you would not otherwise you couldn't have. couldn't have had it. Fair, fair point. I enjoy the debate we have here. Uh, it's certainly not frustrating. Actually, it's, it's really exciting. It's only by having people like that really test what we're talking about, test the metrics, test the concepts we've developed. Um, that actually you find out how rigorous they are. And in the real world, these are going to be tested. So we need to have that debate here. You know, the availability of clean water underpins being able to grow food. The availability of water underpins the ability to be able to create energy. Of course, the, the Food Security Council want to talk about it from the perspective of how do we get people enough calories to live, particularly poor people. The Energy Council want to talk about it from the perspective of how can we ensure that there's enough energy in each market for people to improve their quality of life. The aspect of cross-council interactions is unique, which wouldn't happen in any other event crossing beyond one issue and looking at more thematic systemic issues. You put water up here and you put energy here, you put agriculture over here. Where is the stressor? Is, is it that more water is needed to grow food over here and if this one gets pulled a little bit more, what happens to the water available for energy? What happens to the water available for cities, for drinking water? The most important piece of work that the council has done is to amplify the concept of the water energy food nexus, the relationship between these three critical human development areas, if you will. Well, the word food security right now is under stress. So the question is, how can we really make sure the water is used effectively, efficiently, to produce enough food for the increased population? It's, it's that interplay between one council and the other on problems which are across the boundaries of the council that is fascinating and very important. Externalities are cost to society, which are part of normal everyday business, which business does not pay for. So in that sense, we are internalizing profits and externalizing costs. Profits are taken in, costs are pushed out. This can't go on forever. 2.2 trillion dollars was the total externalities of the top 3,000 corporations in the world. That's not a viable solution for success, even for the corporation, because at some point we will lose the social license to operate. We have the leaders of various sectors of the society showing up at Davos. And if we are able to create an agenda which is representative of the problems that we pick up here, we've ensured that issues have come to people's attention. Some of our events get significant media coverage. So again, if these are issues that are important, that need to be created awareness for, we take these messages to the media. It's been a journey over three years of helping CEOs and government ministers and the heads of global financial institutions to understand the importance of water in underpinning economic growth in particular. Some of these companies are taking steps to say to the subcontractors in the supply chain, this is how much water we want used per unit, per potato, per tomato. You know, we as a company are also benefiting from hearing the diverse perspectives of other members. Because I believe very strongly that solving this global crisis we face will require collaborative innovation and involve the cooperation of many, many parties. Business must and will play its role and contribute to the solution in its own area of responsibility.
That is a very positive step. But the problem is big, right? And the problem is particularly big if we don't start to think about ways of addressing it now. The business of water management is technical, yes, but is also deeply institutional, political, and indeed emotional and religious. And the great challenge of water is how do you bring these various perspectives together into something which can actually work for people.